Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Remy Review. World. This week's episode is going to be about love. Now, I'm not talking kissy, kissy love. I'm not not talking about the love with your spouse. I'm talking about brotherly love. You saw the hippies, the brotherly love. They're out there saying, "Oh, you know, love. Love can change the world. All you need is love." It's true. All you need is love, because love can defeat injustice. You might hurt the ones you love, but you're not going to commit atrocities against them. The few who have had authority bestowed on them don't have the manpower on their own to enslave the other 99.99% of the population. You need people to help maintain the inequity, maintain the suffering. Within the police and military, of course there are people who believe society and the common man should be under a boot and that someone else should be wearing the boot. That's whack! But that's not what all police believe, obviously. I mean, I knew some people who went on to join the police force who were perfectly reasonable people capable of compassion within the conscientious officer brotherly love. If you feel any sort of compassion towards your fellow man, you can't go out and beat him down and take away his freedom unless you think that it's serving a, a greater good. So one thing that's very important when you're out in the streets is that everything you do is nonviolent. See, the conscientious officer's sense of brotherly love comes into conflict with the orders he receives from his superiors that says to beat people down and take away their freedom. The conscientious officer, if he feels love, can't do the things that he's being told to do. Yes, you won't get to the meatheads. The meatheads want to beat people down. But you can't maintain an entire force just with the meatheads, because there just aren't enough of them. There are a lot of conscientious officers out there who don't want to see society slip into this dark and terrible place. And this is why the American government is sending drones all over the world to blow people up. It's, it's not to save soldiers. No one in their right mind thinks that the American government is trying to preserve the life of soldiers. <laughs> the drones are there because if you send regular people out to commit these atrocities, you're going to risk breaking down the whole system and making them turn against it. So we'll send out a little computer to do it. Because a computer can do it. A computer isn't going to have a conscience. A computer isn't going to feel regret or remorse for bombing people from the sky. Too much brotherly love, injustice crumbles because it no longer has the manpower to maintain itself. Love the police so that the ones with a soul will be driven to dissent. News fail. So this week in the Toronto Star, an opinion piece, it's total propaganda crap, that these people in Montreal are violent and that it's dangerous that this is happening. Right in the, right in the title, City Under Siege. Because, you know, the protesters are catapulting dead cows over the walls of Montreal, I guess, right? And, and Montrealers are pouring hot oil down from the walls of the city to stop the siege. That's what's happening. Likens it to the hockey riots. Okay, this is like Vancouver when everyone got drunk and they went out in the streets and smashed things because they were mad about the hockey game. That's what supposedly the, the Toronto Star is trying to tell us that these protests in Montreal, that it's, it's kind of the same thing, and that Canadians are just losing it, laughingly refers to us Canadians as peace-loving, because, hey, clearly we're not peace-loving. Look at these Montrealers, these violent people in the streets in Montreal. Oh, we're not peace-loving in Canada anymore. That's a joke. He mentions the G20, and uh, the two groups that are, were apparently involved in the G20 were overreacting cops and anarchists. So what about the, the majority of the population that was in that protest was nonviolent? But no, we have anarchists and, and meathead cops. There's no conscientious police. There's no police that are really just concerned with public safety. And there's no uh, nonviolent protesters there who are just unhappy with the system. Another line, I'm going to pick apart this line, claims that the, in the Montreal protest there are three types of people. There's the tuition people, the students. Then there are trade union radicals, and then the usual suspect militants. 
So you put that little word usual in there, and you're saying that the whole group is filled with suspect militants. You've got students, trade unionists, and the usual, as in completing the list, suspect militants. So this is, this is all militant. There's a quarter million people in the streets in Montreal, and they're all violent. That's what the Toronto Star is saying. Claims that the only reason that they're in the streets is because education has become elitist. And says, well, you know what? Education is elitist. It's expensive. Not everyone can go to school. And you know that that is a reasonable argument, but it's elitist towards wealth. It's not elitist towards merit. So, great, we're going to put all the rich people through education, and some of the smartest people in our society are going to end up completely indebted when they come out of school, if they're able to get in there. Or they're just not going to go at all, and they're going to feel disenfranchised and defeated, and they're not going to realize their full potential. And that hurts our country when we, we have the smartest people in our country not having their potential realized. That hurts all of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the usual currency propaganda is involved in this article as well. It says that the province of Quebec has their massive provincial debt because of education. That's, that's what happened, that education. Because people have been getting cheaper education in Quebec for the last 20 years, that that's why the province has a massive debt now. But absolutely nothing about the fact that no one lent Quebec anything. That currency was just issued by a private bank, handed over to the province, and now the province pays interest over and over on this debt. Yeah, Remy. That's why there's a debt in the province. Provinces shouldn't even have a debt. The federal government has the ability to print currency, but they don't. And this is the type of thing they don't cover in the mainstream. They tell you that the debts are caused because regular people need things. We have a debt because of our health system. We have a debt because we want to educate our people. We have a debt because we want clean water. It's ridiculous. So a quick recap on the neoliberal crap coming out of the Toronto Star. They want you to hate the protesters, hate the cops, and stay inside and do nothing. Consume. It's spring, and love is in the air. Well, it's not love. It's actually just a bunch of weird chemicals that are going to slow down your brain functioning. Perfume. Commercial industrial chemicals. That's where love is now. And love is vacant. It's had all the meaning sucked out of the word by people who make this crap. Brotherly love is having a hard time cutting through the toxic fog that we spray on ourselves every day. Now, what am I trying to say that, that they've taken love and they've sucked all the meaning out? Well, you got to look at the marketing of perfume. I quickly went online. I was going to maybe come up with a short list of uh, misuses of the word love when advertising perfume. Because I figured, you know, there's, there's got to be at least six or seven perfumes out there that are using the word love to redefine it as a term that applies to chemicals in a bottle instead of real love between human beings. And you know what I found? That it, it's it's... You know, maybe this is because I don't wear perfume or buy perfume or go into stores that have perfume, but I, I had no idea how extensive their use of the word love is. And I, I actually came up with a list of over a hundred perfumes that have love in the title, and I'm going to read it for you really quickly. Love Song, Love by Killian, Love Chloe, Love Rocks, Love Etc., Oda Love, Love and Luck, Love of Pink, Love and Toast, Live Love, Love, L Live Love, Laugh Dream, One Love, Love in Black, I Love Love, Sex in the City, Love, In Love Again, Tainted Love, yeah. Touch with Love, So in Love, Love Spell, P.S. I Love You, Love de Toi, Colors of Love, Fancy Love, I Love New York, Love at First Glow, Live in Love, Love Book Number 7, Love Hurts, True Love, Perry Ellis Love, I Love Her, Love Secrets, Peace, Love, and Juster, Peace, Love, and Juicy Couture, Endless Love, Love Crazy, Beauty Love, Love in White, Love in Paris, Happening Love, Beautiful Love, Love from New York, Vampires Love, Love Blossoms, Love and Light, In the Mood for Love, Love Me Tight, Love Me, Secret Love, Fall in Love, Love Dance, Love is a Treasure, Violetta in Love, Love Yeah, I'm Sorry, With Love, Love Fury, Lovely, Sheer Love, First Love, Love Coco, In Love, Fresh Love, Peace Love, Hope, Only Love, Love Line, True Love, Love Struck, 
Haruku Lovers Love, Hard Love, Wrapped with Love, Blue Love, Christine uh, something, Love, Love Forever, Pure Love, Love in the World, Love Day, I'm in Love, Love Ralph Lauren, Love Gorilla, Love Flowers, Apple Love, Love Express, Sweet Love, Love and Glamour, Love Letter, Love Honey, Love Love Love, Love Line, Elixir of Love, Pirates of Love, Love in Love, Love at First Scent, Following Love, GH Love, Romantic Love, Love by Nina, Sweet Love, Love Attack, Love Kills Slowly, Success Love, Love is Heavenly, Hummer Love Perfume, Amor Amor, Beyond Love, I Love 47. Culture. Jim Smetchland here. Prolific today. What up, man? Blah, blah. Yeah. Blah. So, today, let's see. I couldn't even get Remy Stevens to perform today. So, we're just going to take an old clip of Remy playing something that he played a while ago. And we're just going to put that on the end of the show. I'm Jim Smetchlin. And this was Remy Review.